Hello friends, today I am going to talk about peripheral nervous system. So before that we have to understand the whole body nervous system and this nervous system consists of central nervous system as well as peripheral nervous system. So the central nervous system consists of the brain as well as the spinal cord whereas the peripheral nervous system consists of other nerves like cranial nerves and the somatic nerves and so today in this topic we are going to talk in detail what is the peripheral nervous system and for the central nervous system we we, uh, we are going to make another video and i will put the link later so let, uh, let so let us understand what is peripheral nervous system the peripheral nervous system is one of the two components that make up the nervous system of bilateral animals with other part being central nervous system the peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves and ganglia outside the brain and spinal cord. The main function of peripheral nervous system is to connect the central nervous system to the limbs and organs, essentially serving as a relay between the brain and spinal cord and the rest of the body part. The peripheral nervous system is divided into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. In somatic nervous system, the cranial nerves are the part of the peripheral nervous system and with the exceptions like optic nerve and the retina. Whereas the autonomic nervous system exerts involuntary control over the smooth muscles and glands. The connection between central nervous system and organs allows the system to be in two different functional states that is sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So we will discuss in detail. So as I said earlier, the peripheral nervous system is divided into the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. So this somatic nervous system is under voluntary control and transmits signals from the brain to end organs such as muscles. The sensory nervous system is part of the somatic nervous system and transmits signals from the senses such as taste and body touch. Now the, the autonomic nervous system is a self-regulating system which influences the function of the organs such as voluntary control, for example heart rate and the function of digestive system. So now let us understand what is this somatic nervous system. This somatic system includes the sensory nervous system and the somatosensory system and consists of sensory nerves and somatic nerves and main nerves which hold both functions. In the head and neck, cranial nerves carry somatosensory data. There are, two, there, are, uh, there are 12 cranial nerves, 10 of which originate from brainstem and mainly control the functions of the anatomic structure of the head with, ex with exceptions. The nuclei of the olfactory nerve and the optic nerves lie in the forebrain and thalamus respectively and are thus not considered to be the true cranial nerves. One of the unique cranial nerve is the vagus nerve which receives sensory information from organs in the thorax and abdomen. The accessory nerve is responsible for innervation and, and for the rest of the body the spinal nerves are responsible for somatosensory function. These arise from the spinal cord. So now we will talk about what is that autonomic nervous system. This autonomic nervous system controls involuntary responses to regulate physiological functions. The brain and spinal cord of the central nervous system are connected with organs that have a smooth muscles such as heart, bladder and other cardiac, exocrine and endocrine related organs by ganglionic neurons. The most notable physiological effect from the, at, uh, from the autonomic activity are people constriction and dilation and salivation of saliva. The autonomic nervous system is always activated but is either in the sympathetic or parasympathetic state which we will discuss later. So depending on the situation one state can overshadow the other resulting in a release of different kinds of neurotransmitters. So now we will talk about sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic system is activated during a fight or flight situation in which mental stress or, phys or physical danger is encountered. The neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and epinephrine are released which increases heart rate and blood flow in certain areas like muscle while simultaneously decreasing activities of non-critical function for survival like digestion. The systems are independent to each other which allows activation of certain parts of body while other remains rested. 
whereas the peripheral nervous whereas whereas the parasympathetic nervous system use uh, it primarily using the neurotransmitter like acetylcholine as a mediator the parasympathetic system allows the body to function in a rest and digest state the c- consequently when the parasympathetic system dominates body there are increases in salivation and activities in digestion while heart rate and other sympathetic response decreases unlike sympathetic system humans have some voluntary controls in the parasympathetic system the most prominent examples of this control are urination and defecation well in terms of disease of peripheral nervous system the disease of peripheral nervous system can be specific to one or more nerves or affect the system as a whole any peripheral nerve or nerve root can be damaged which is referred as mononeuropathy such injury such injuries can be because of injury or trauma or compression and this compression of nerves can occur because of a tumor mass or injury alternatively if a nerve is in an area with a fixed size it may be trapped if other components increases in size so thank you friends for watching this video and if you like it please like share and subscribe and share with your friends as well as colleagues and in the next video we are going to talk about the pharmacology of peripheral nervous system including other topics and so stay tuned Thank you.